At a time when military prowess and innovation never rested, the revolutionary British Harrier jet rose as a game-changer design in aviation combat. Born from the genius of Huckler Siddeley in the 1960s, this trailblazing vertical short takeoff and landing warbird turned heads across the globe. The original Harrier's unique capabilities allowed it to soar from short runways, aircraft carriers, and even makeshift landing zones. It gave its pilots unparalleled agility and was used to perform formidable combat tactics during its service history. But as with any other technology, age soon caught up with the mighty Harrier. By the 1980s, the design faced obsolescence. However, the influential warplane was not done leaving its mark in modern warfare. Soon, the United States Marine Corps caught wind of the Harrier's potential. Envisioning a bolder future, the USMC teamed up with British Aerospace and American giant McDonnell Douglas to forge an alliance capable of transforming the aging warbird into a modern aircraft fit for a new age of combat aviation. As a phoenix emerging from the ashes, the American AV-8B Harrier II was reborn from the British Harrier's design. With enhanced aerodynamics, a mighty engine, cutting-edge avionics, and versatile weapon systems, the new Harrier II was ready to dominate the skies. Big Shoes to Fill As the world plunged deeper into the Cold War, the original Harrier jump jet emerged as a masterful display of British engineering and a formidable asset for the West in its face-off against the Soviet Union. First conceived as early as 1959, the Harrier's design promised to completely revolutionize seaborne aircraft design with a set of tactical capabilities that had been limited to the realm of imagination. The Harrier became a highly coveted asset as the first fully operational VSTOL jet. This meant it could take off and land vertically or on short runways, a significant breakthrough in aviation. This allowed the aircraft to operate from various platforms, including small aircraft carriers, makeshift airstrips, and even roads in remote locations. On top of that, the aircraft's robust Rolls-Royce Pegasus engine, vectored thrust technology, and remarkable adaptability gave the plane a daunting combat performance and flight response that immediately made it a breakthrough in combat aviation history. With such features, and its ability to operate from dispersed and hidden locations, the Harrier provided NATO forces with a massive advantage against Soviet operations. They now possessed a strategic advantage in countering the threat of preemptive strikes on air bases. Still, as groundbreaking as it was, the original Harrier was far from perfect. Its incredible capabilities were often handicapped by a limited range and payload. For the US, the limitations were significant, as the Harrier could only carry less than half the 4,000-pound payload of the smaller A-4 Skyhawk and over a more limited radius. That's when the US Navy began to envision a second generation of Harrier aircraft that would keep all the formidable advantages of the original Warbird while showcasing a more extended range and carrying a heftier payload. With this in mind, the US military formed a coalition with British Aerospace and the American McDonnell Douglas Corporation to create a new generation of Harrier warplanes fit for US service and ready to spearhead a new generation of aviation combat platforms. Bumpy Road the stage was set for the emergence of Harrier II. The official development project began in 1973, and the program sought to double the payload and increase the range of the original Harrier by using the improved Pegasus 15 engine. In less than two years, it became apparent that the endeavor would be much more challenging than previously thought. By 1975, the British government withdrew from the project due to funding constraints and a limited RAF requirement for only 60 aircraft. The United States was unwilling to fund the entire project and ended it later that year. But the American and British companies were reluctant to abandon the promising design and continued pursuing Harrier improvements separately. Hawker Siddeley focused on a new larger wing, while McDonnell Douglas developed an aircraft tailored for the U.S. Marine Corps. Due to the insistence of McDonnell Douglas and the continued need for a Harrier replacement, in 1976, the U.S. Department of Defense authorized resuming development efforts. McDonnell Douglas modified two Harrier 8B-8As leading to a prototype designated as YAV-8B, which flew for the first time in November 1978. Flight testing revealed more drag than expected, a positive payload, range, and VSTOL performance results. This initially resulted in a development contract awarded in 1979, procuring 12 aircraft. With additional tests continuing to showcase the potential of the new Harrier, the U.S. ordered 324 additional units. However, between 1978 and 1980, the U.S. Department of Defense and the U.S. Navy tried to terminate the AV-8B program several times due to budgetary constraints. Nevertheless, in 1981, the program received an unexpected revival when British Aerospace re-entered the project as a subcontractor, enticed by the large production run's lower costs and the fact that the U.S. was shouldering development expenses. 
The two companies plan to build 400 Harrier IIs, with the USMC procuring 336 aircraft and the RAF procuring 60. Four full-scale development aircraft were constructed, and the first took its maiden flight on November 5, 1981. Under the Hood After the long and excruciating development phase, the emerging AV-8B Harrier II proved to be a remarkable subsonic attack aircraft with a unique design and cutting-edge technology. At the heart of the Harrier II lies the Rolls-Royce Pegasus turbofan engine, featuring two intakes and four synchronized vectored nozzles that give this extraordinary aircraft its vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. This unusual nozzle arrangement distinguishes it from other fixed-wing aircraft, providing a superior control at low airspeeds. The Harrier II has a centerline fuselage and six-wing hardpoints, allowing it to carry a formidable arsenal of 9,200 pounds of weapons, including missiles and bombs. With an internal fuel capacity of 7,500 pounds and configured for aerial refueling, the aircraft can achieve a maximum ferry range of 2,100 miles and a combat radius of 300 nautical miles, at least 100 miles more than its predecessor. The Harrier II's design incorporates numerous structural and aerodynamic changes, including a wholly redesigned airframe, with a raised cockpit, a one-piece supercritical wing, and extensive use of carbon fiber composite materials, the Harrier II offers improved visibility, better payload capacity, and lighter overall weight. The cockpit features a large cathode ray tube multipurpose display, offering the pilot vital information, including radar warnings and weapons delivery checklists. Coupled with hands-on throttle and stick control and increased engineered lateral stability, the Harrier II is significantly easier to fly than its forerunner. The Harrier II comes in several variants, such as the Night Attack Harrier and the Harrier II Plus, which feature upgraded avionics like forward-looking infrared cameras and APG-65 multi-mode pulse Doppler radar systems. These enhancements allow the aircraft to launch advanced beyond visual range missiles, essential for modern warfare. Ultimately, the problematic development of the Harrier II paid off as an engineering triumph that evolved from the original Harrier to become an even more powerful and versatile aircraft. Its innovative design, advanced avionics, and state-of-the-art weaponry make it a force to be reckoned with. Trial by Fire the first production, AV-8B, was delivered to Marine Attack Training Squadron 203 at Marine Corps Air Station Sherry Point on December 12, 1983. Before it could dash above the battlefields, the AV-8B Harrier II underwent a grueling operational evaluation from August 1984 to March 1985. A specialized team of pilots and maintenance personnel pushed the aircraft to its limits, testing it under the harshest combat conditions. Finally, on January 17, 1991, the AV-8B leapt into action for the first time in the Gulf War. A call for air support against Iraqi artillery sent the Harrier into the fray. The aircraft's prowess in the skies over Kuwait would become legendary in the following days. During the conflict, 86 AV-8Bs amassed 3,380 flights and 4,100 flight hours, with a mission availability rate of over 90%. The Harrier II's deadly precision played a crucial role in the war. Years later, in the skies above Yugoslavia, the AV-8B would once again prove its worth during Operation Allied Force. Harriers from the 24th and 26th Marine Expeditionary Units took to the skies, relentlessly striking targets and providing close air support for coalition forces. The aircraft continued to shine as it took part in Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. As part of the USMC 15th and 26th MEUs, the Harrier IIs roared into action, raining fire on enemy positions and providing crucial support for ground troops. The aircraft's advanced targeting systems allowed it to carry out night missions with a high degree of accuracy. Additionally, over 1,000 sorties were flown during the Iraq War, primarily supporting USMC ground units. The aircraft's ability to provide 24-hour support and operate from forward arming and refueling points earned it high praise from USMC commanders. Years later, the Harrier II would serve in Libya during Operation Odyssey Dawn, where USMC AV-8Bs enforced the UN no-fly zone with lethal efficiency. International Operators the aircraft's unmatched versatility allowed it to participate in a wide range of military operations, from significant conflicts to humanitarian missions. The Harrier II has also proven to be a valuable asset for other global actors in recent history. The Italian Navy acquired two TAV-8Bs and 16 AV-8B Plus aircraft in the late 1980s. Subsequently, Harriers were locally assembled by Alenia Aeronautica from U.S. kits. Italian Harriers were used for various missions, including combat missions in Kosovo and Libya. They were updated to carry advanced weaponry, such as AIM-120 AMRAMs and Joint Direct Attack Munition Guided Bombs. The Italian Navy's AV-8Bs are set to be replaced by 15 F-35Bs as part of the air wing of Cavour. Spain, another AV-8B operator, signed an order for 12 aircraft in 1983. 
they were eventually upgraded to the plus standard, allowing them to carry more advanced weaponry. Spanish Harriers enforced the UN's no-fly zone over Bosnia and Herzegovina, but did not take part in the 2003 Iraq War. Although initially considering replacing the Harrier IIs with F-35Bs, Spain extended their service life due to budget constraints. The AV-8B Harrier II still has a promising career ahead of it, as it continues to showcase superior performance, great adaptability, and legendary combat prowess. Even as it's being replaced by fifth-generation warplanes by some air forces, the Harrier II's impact on aviation history and its usefulness to affordability ratios will continue to make it an influential platform for many years to come. Thank you for watching Dark Skies. For more amazing warbirds, airmen, and their exploits, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. If you want to delve into history's most brutal battles, click on your screen and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels. We upload new videos constantly, so stay tuned.